Hello and welcome to my videos. In today's video, we are going to learn simple threading program in Python and we are going to see what are limitations of Python and uh, we will talk about some limitations uh, related to Python concurrency or Python multi-threading programming and we'll also going to see a sync IO but maybe that will happen in next video. So let's get started. I have created a simple program. This is in, in PyCharm editor. So what I'm going to do is uh, we are going to create simple producer consumer program in python so let's start and before that what i'm going to print implementation of my my system so i have windows and uh, python installed on my windows but what i want to show you is i want to show you the python implementation yeah if i run this it should print c python so what is this c python so if so there are multiple implementations of python for example c python j python ion python c python so this is a wiki page so as you can see c python is a reference implementation of python programming language it is written in c and python and g python is a default and most widely used implementation in python language so other implementation that i mentioned was ion python and j python so in j python the code written in python language is converted into uh, java's bytecode and then it is computable you can access all java objects classes and then it is that bytecode is uh, run on jvm similarly in ion python the python code is converted into dotnet uh, intermediate language that is clr and then it is uh, you can execute it on dotnet c sharp virtual machine and so these are third party implementation but mainly this c python is the default implementation and most widely used now why are why we are talking about this c python implementation is let me open so before we do our program before we start let me show you uh, some documentation and here you can see in c python so this is python's threading module documentation so this is uh, the title you can see thread based parallel parallelism this comes with python by default and so here you can see the important part is here in cpython due to global interpreter lock gil only one thread can execute python code at once even though certain performance oriented libraries might overcome this limitation uh, but by default only one thread can execute python code at once due to this gil that is global interpreter lock the the mechanism this gil this mechanism is used by cpython interpreter to assure that only one thread only one thread executes python bytecode at a time okay so the, because of this this limitation the threading in python uh, is always questioned compared to other programming languages like uh, java or uh, golang uh, or maybe kotlin so they have much much powerful multi threading where you can actually utilize all the available resources but in java as we can see only one thread is executed at once and in recent implementation where async io has come up it is altogether the it is it is different way of developing the code so we will also be discussing that maybe this in this video or maybe in the next video but let's see uh, let's look at simple example of multi threading in java and then we'll move to uh, async io so yeah so my project here is uh, we created so let me create so i'm going to create producer and consumer let me uh, delete this default the code which are uh, uh, comments created by default so i have main method so let me create producer method producer which takes parameter as one data and second method i need is consumer i'm going to pass data we need data here and the data is of course nothing but let me create q and we are going to use q package so it's actually small q dot yeah this is how we create q now we need to create thread right so first we create producer thread equal to now we will be using threading package threading dot thread and here we pass the first parameter is target method that we will want we wish to execute in parallel and the second parameter that we pass is arguments in that i'm going to pass first is q right 
Q. That's it. So let me copy paste. Same for consumer. Consumer. And here method is consumer. So both methods need Q as a parameter. So we are basically sharing. And here I'm going to call start method. Just like I think in most of the programming language, the thread life cycle remains the same. So we, because it depends on native system threads, most of the time this thread life cycle doesn't change across the systems. So we, we have this threading implementation ready. So we are passing this, we are passing this queue. Let's implement producer. So here, let me create, let's run one loop for i in range of, let's create five, six, five elements. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add data dot put this i in this loop. Okay. And uh, just to slow down, a little bit i'm going to call time dot sleep uh, just sleep it for one second uh, so we are expecting five values that will be produced and will be pushed into this queue okay and in consumer what we are going to do is we are going to so let's say while true so we are not sure so actually speaking here also we should be having while true loop but let's keep it for now in consumer we need data element that is produce so element is data dot get now the chances are that if the data is not available then we will get exception we so we should be handling this so we should have try and catch and yeah so get and we'll print this element and we will have except so we expect index error so here what i'm going to do is we just will sleep till the next data comes all right so so what will happen is after every one second so let's assume that data is not available then consumer thread will sleep and it will again try to fetch check data after one every one second if data is not available otherwise it will continue to get the data okay so that let's start so this is very simple code if i run this then you can see 0 1 2 3 so all values are printed and now the producer thread has exited the consumer thread is still waiting okay so if i add loop here okay let me stop and add loop here then you will see you will see oh uh, yeah so it's ne it's never ending program and it will it will restart from zero after completing from zero to five. Let's see. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. And again, it will start from zero, one, two. Okay. So our producer thread is continuously producing these integers and adding it into queue. Uh, and because this queue data structure from in Python is by default, it's thread safe. Uh, we can access, we can use this queue across these both threads in parallel so this is about simple threading so in next video we will see we'll talk about async io uh, this async io which uh, which is very powerful paradigm of developing async programming based systems so yeah so thanks for watching this video